Hello, everyone. Welcome to New Session in Heart Americas TV. Today, we will learn about photobiology. But what is photobiology and why me as a grower need to worry about this? Well, photobiology is the interaction of light with living organisms, meaning the effect of light in living organisms. Light is very important in growing systems. We have learned already a lot in the rest of our videos about the importance of light and how important it is to measure light in growing systems. However, it's even more important to know how light can affect different plant processes. For this, we first need to start from scratch by understanding the nature of light. Light can behave as a particle and also as a wave. Therefore, it's possible to measure light in different ways. Some measurements are based on radiation or energy, and other measurements are based on photons or particles. In plants, we have learned already that for measuring light in plants, we need to consider the photosynthetic active radiation. So this is a measurement of photons of light that the plant is receiving within the range that the plant utilizes for doing photosynthesis. When we think about light in plants, we probably think first about photosynthesis. We always link light to photosynthesis. However, photosynthesis is just one of all plant processes that are affected by light. We can list way more, like for example, CO2 intake, temperature, photomorphogenesis, photoperiod, plant morphology, relative humidity, and even irrigation. So let's go over all of this. Let's start with photosynthesis and CO2 intake. We know photosynthesis can be directly related to light. The more light, the more photosynthesis. Of course, before reaching the saturation point. After this, photosynthesis will not go up and you can also have a reduction in photosynthesis by an excess of light. Well, however, CO2 intake can also be added to this equation. It's not only about light and photosynthesis. If we increase the, the intake of CO2 by the plant, because we increase the CO2 concentration in the ambient, then we can improve also photosynthesis. This is why CO2 injection can be used in greenhouses and indoor facilities. But remember, it's not only about just adding more CO2. You always need to take consideration about the light intensity to optimize your crop performance based on the interaction of light with CO2 intake and with photosynthesis. Then we have temperature. It's pretty well known that light can affect temperature. As we learn, light can also behave as a wave of radiation. For example, when selecting a light fixture, we can also get information about the heat provided by the lamp. When comparing LEDs to high pressure sodium lamps, we can learn that leaf temperature can be reduced by about 1.3 degrees Celsius or more when using LEDs. We always need to remember that there will be always a portion of light generating heat. For example, solar radiation covers a big range from 300 to 1,500 nanometers. In here, just about 45 to 50% is light. The rest includes heat. This is why glassing material, shade clothes, and specific products can be used to reduce radiation from the sun inside of our greenhouses. When radiation increase, leaf temperature, of course, also increase, and this will have an effect on our plants. Leaf temperature can affect transpiration rate. If we increase transpiration, this means our plant will be taking more water. Therefore, there will be a relation between light and irrigation. This is why in some greenhouses we use radiation as an indicator for irrigation. Transpiration can also affect relative humidity levels and by consequence, our greenhouse or indoor facility management. 
So remember, if you have, for example, a like feature that is making your plant to transpire more, then you will have a higher relative humidity on your ambient. And you probably will require more ventilation or the use of AC unit or, for example, exhaust fans. So totally, this can affect your expenses. For example, going back to hypersusodium lamps. We know hypersusodium lamps can increase transpiration rate due to the radiation emitted by the light fixture. LED light can reduce transpiration by 17% in comparison to hypersuit sodium lamps, meaning less irrigation required and a more stable environment inside of the system. Colors of light can also affect the way plants start to produce different compounds. For example, blue light, far red light, and UV light are related to anthocyanin and phenolic compound production. Anthocyanin are very important in crops like, for example, berries and red lettuce. So sometimes the light will be the one that will create some coloration on your crop. Last but not less important, we have photoperiod. Light can be measured in photons, also uh, energy, but what about hours? Hours of light are also important for different crops. Plants have a response to for a period. And this can lead some processes like, for example, flowering, floriculture, and also fruit production. We need flowering in both. So this process is essential. Some crops are stimulated to flower under short days, other under long days. Other plants can also be the neutral, meaning no response to for a period. However, some crops like, for example, strawberries, cannabis, and chrysanthemum are some examples of plants with a strong response to for a period. As we learn, light can have a very, very important impact in different plant processes. It goes way beyond to just photosynthesis. So remember, the more you understand each variable, the more control you will have over your crop. So pay attention to light and all the variables that can be affected by light. I hope you enjoyed this session. Remember, my name is Carla Garcia, Hort America's Technical Service, and I need also to comment that we are working on a guide on this topic. So this will be a really, really nice guide where you will be able to learn about photobiology from scratch to the more deep content. So I hope you enjoyed this session. Please remember to leave comments and to subscribe to our channel. You can also find me on Instagram as Professor Grohl. See you on the next video.